Couples with very young children are a rare sight on the streets of Ballon Road these days. It's become a place for the young of school-going age to be educated for immigration, a place for the old to remember better times. As well as primary schools, at second level the town has a convent, a vocational school and a boys CBS, catering for about 600 students between them. This is our Leaving Cert class in Ballon Robe. They'll be doing their Leaving Cert now in summer and they're about 42 or 43 doing the exam. How many boys could see their future in this country? Hold up your hands. How many boys can see their future outside this country? <clears throat> Only 10 out of the 43 saw their future in Ireland. The rest, two thirds of the class, see no future for themselves in this country, even though most would stay if they had a choice. What is your reaction, brother, to the poll that we've just done here? Well, I'm not surprised. I have them for career guidance and I've, I have a feel of what they're, what they're going to do or what they have to do. So it seems that about three quarters of them would see their future outside the country. Would that be your own experience? I think so. I, I think so, unless things improve. But that present, I'm afraid most of them have to leave the country, unfortunately. Good afternoon, girls. Leaving Cert Class of 89, questions now today of a different type. Kathleen Ryder, Vice Principal of the Convent, put the same two questions to the girls of their Leaving Cert class. Tell me, how many of you see a future for you in Ireland? A mere eight of the class of 55 see their future in Ireland. And how many of you see your future outside of Ireland? The vast majority, 47 of the class, see their future outside Ireland. Two thirds going to England, one third to America. All except one would stay if they thought the opportunities were here. Beside the convent, a new community school is going up for all the town's third level students. But will it be needed by the next generation? Towns like this aren't very easy. The young people of this generation would prefer to stay in Ballinrobe, or at least in Ireland, but what few jobs there are are badly paid. It's Hobson's choice and the lure of immigration is strong. They hear stories of lads coming back in the holidays. They dress well, they're looking well, they're talking of earning three, four hundred pounds a week. Living well, or appear to be living well anyway. Appearances alone would bring over most people to England. They wouldn't wait here paying, wait, earning sixty, seventy pounds a week because they just wouldn't pay them. If I was getting two hundred pounds a week paying job here, I would stay here because the quality of life, this, the life, I enjoy life here. I'd prefer to stay here than go abroad, but not everybody is going to have that chance and they, they probably will have to go abroad, a lot of people. I could work in, in Ballon Road, so I could. I have a job, but all my friends have begun. gone. There'll be no one around town next year that I would know and I would just here by myself. So I couldn't imagine that I'd stay in Ballon Road for that reason alone. Immigration here in Ballon Road is almost a fact of mm -hmm. life now. Um, I think the fact that immigration does give you experience, it could be to your advantage as well. You go to England, you go to a job centre, you can choose between six to maybe eight jobs. Here you scrape for one and you will hold on to it if you get it. Like It's, it's just a fact of life anymore really, the job situation here. It's what could I do about it? Well at the moment I don't see them doing much really. They're, as it is, they're saying the employment figures are dropping. That's because people are immigrating. They don't say that, though. We'll have oh, 110 or 120 uh, Leaving Cert students this year. 30, 40 of those probably will go on to third level education. I can't see jobs for any of the rest of them. And being a travel agent, I mean, I'm, I'm first to meet them here, and they're coming in, they're immigrating one way tickets to England and America. In the late 70s, the IDA built advanced factories hoping to attract employers to places like Ballon Robe. But despite some interest by possible tenants, this one has been lying idle for the past six years. While the town's development committee has failed to attract any new industry here, half its young people have emigrated. 210 in the last five years. In the meantime, these doors remain firmly closed. If they could put some industry in there, and you feel in 10 years they should be able to put something, 
let's just say, a hundred jobs. That would virtually do away with the immigration problem from this parish. Whereas a hundred jobs in the likes of Dublin, Cork, even Castlebar and Ballinay, isn't going to affect the lifestyle that much. It would turn this parish totally around. The people who, who seem to mind emigration are the people who are left, the parents. <clears throat> it's not so much that they don't mind leaving. They've no choice. It's acceptance. It's not a thing they want. It's a thing they see no alternative to. I mean, you take any 18, 19, 20-year-old. What, what choice has he? He can't go around crying to everybody and going to England. He sees it. That's where he's going to go because there's nothing left here for him. It's not a long way from Ballinrobe to the Bronx anymore, but it's a far cry for the young emigrant. There may be 100,000 undocumented Irish in the US without legal status. Nobody knows exactly. But any white faces you see here on Bainbridge Avenue are likely to be Irish. This is the North Bronx, New York City, with perhaps the biggest population of young single Irish people outside Dublin. There's no doubt the pubs are Irish. There are no less than 20 Irish pubs in this half mile stretch of Bainbridge Avenue. Chickens. Eggs. For most Irish women now going to America, the wheel has come the full circle. Like their early predecessors, they work in domestic service. As nannies, their attraction for American families is that they're white, English speaking, educated, and doing a job Americans won't do. It's a stepping stone to legal status for the girls, and in the meantime, it's accommodation and security. 18 months ago, Janet and Lisa left their family behind in Finglas, Dublin. Now their mother and father are in England, and their brother Joe has joined them in America. Like many others, Janet and Lisa had a bad experience at the beginning, but they're now very happy with new families in a leafy New York suburb. That wasn't the case when they arrived. That was year eight months ago. So how did you get on then when you came over here? Why did you come or how did you come here? We came here through an agency at home. And uh, he sent us here not even knowing who we were coming to. And he sent us to bad families. And they abused us and just treated us really bad. In what way? Just making, I mean, we worked 14, 15, 16 hours a day. We worked Saturdays, Sundays, I had a half day off, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anywhere. So I worked for the half eight too. The half day, you know. What, what about payment? How much were you paid? The pay? $100 a week. I arrived and everything was fine for about a week. And then suddenly it was more and more work. And, you know, the wages wasn't coming. I was three weeks out of wages. And uh, then it was, could, can you feed the horses? Can you feed the dogs? Um, the husband would go away and she'd say, oh, I don't feel good. And she'd go to bed. And I'd be left with the three kids, and they had eight horses and two dogs, two cats. I'd be left with a whole lot. I started getting depressed at home due to the fact that I wasn't working. And I never had a full-time job in Ireland, believe it or not, since I left school. But um, the only full-time job I had was when I went away to London. And I was in London for um, two and a half years. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the place. I was getting a lot of ag aggravation. and really getting upset and so I decided I'd go home. So I went home and I was home for seven months and the girls got in touch with me, gave me the chance, the opportunity to come out. So I come out two weeks ago on Monday and I started work on the Wednesday and I get $300 a week and they said to me that it'll go up to 600 in a month. So the way I say it is, there's no opportunity like that back in Dublin for me. In recent times, New York has fallen into decay, but now they're rebuilding it. And 75% of Irishmen over here work in construction. Many of them working for Irish companies, ignoring the threat of a $10,000 fine facing companies for employing illegals. The big money is in trades like bricklaying and plastering. But most of the Irish earn $500 a week as laborers. Peter trained as a bricklayer with Anko, but couldn't get a job in Ireland so he came to New York. I left Ireland because obviously there's no work there and I just decided to come over here. I said, why not? Uh, a lot of my friends have come over here, so I decided to travel over. At the beginning, it's quite tough for a lot of people if you don't know someone here. Uh, money's quite good. Uh, about 650, 700 on average. 
you know, so sometimes during the winter there's not as much work, you know, it's a bit more slack or sometimes a lot of ones be off, you know, because it's been so cold, but in general there's always work around, you know. I think it's a pity though, I mean, there isn't so much more work that we could build Ireland up as much as we're building New York up, <laughs> you know, but that's the way things are, you know.